Hey, everybody. Welcome to Away Games, a Chicago Cubs podcast. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Kevin McCaffrey, and I'm here with your other host, Adam Mamawala. What's up, Adam? What's up, everybody? Greeting from, uh, greetings from my dad's uh, office in Hillsborough, New Jersey. Greetings from Adam's well. dad's office. I'm not there, but I'll also greet you from there. It's great. It's a great yeah. setup. Um, we, uh, we're riding a, an away games hot streak here. Uh, our most recent episode featured uh, Cubs pitcher Alec Mills. And this week, we had a chance to talk to, uh, I, I would say, a, a top prospect in the Cubs organization, yeah. uh, Justin Steele. Yeah. So Left- we had a chance yeah. to talk to him. Lefty, yeah. Left-handed pitcher, a uh, guy who throws hard, who's uh, overcome Tommy John. He was uh, signing straight out of high school. And uh, I believe it was in the Schwarber draft that they – you know, save some money, weirdly, on Schwarber in the first round. Yeah. We're able to get uh, Steele and Dylan Cease were the were the big uh, big name pitchers they were able to sign out of that draft. And, uh, yeah, Justin's hanging out in, uh, in Mississippi right now, and he was kind enough to hang out with us. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? What up, man? How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Man. Thanks for jumping on. I caught a little bit of your uh, live stream with the Pelicans. Yeah, how'd you like that? It was cool, man. Who were you talking to from there? I, I caught the last couple of minutes of it. His, na- his name's Hunter. He wor- he's been working with the Pelicans for a few years. Um, yeah, he asked me the other day to do that, and I was like, yeah, it's always fun working with the Pelicans. Nice, totally. That's fun. Um, how, lo- how long were you down there in, uh, in Myrtle Beach? I was down there the 2017 season, and okay. then af- after uh, a rehab from Tommy John, I went back there for a little bit of 2018, then went up to double A. Okay. Sweet. How how is uh how is Myrtle Beach compare as a as a minor league town? You've been in a couple. What's like what's been the most fun town to hang in that you've been in so far? I'd put Myrtle Beach number one as as home affiliates. I'd put Myrtle Beach number one and then Eugene, Oregon was a really cool place. Solid. Yeah, those are pretty far apart. That's a that's like Yeah. Not, not real not real efficient spacing by the Cubs organization, but <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> and then uh, South Bend South Bend's a really gorgeous field it's so nice it's really good minor league field nice well thanks for uh thanks for joining us again man I don't know that we've ever had a uh an interviewer <laughs> an interview go through more effort to get to us with this one we had a tornado <laughs> <laughs> a tornado had power outages the next day yeah sorry about that oh, <laughs> oh no so, you're I mean, good man <laughs> yeah that's not on you that's just uh, overcoming adversity that's it's the yeah that's all that's all we're doing here yeah exactly. uh well i gotta the first the first and most important question i had to ask you it's really it's not even a question it's a compliment i'm gonna go out, uh, go out on a limb and say that you have hands down the best instagram handle in the entire club's organization <laughs> thank you i appreciate that and well i mean it's it's at mr Steelio girl yeah, uh, I mean, if you if that's your last name, it would you'd be doing yourself a disservice to not have that as your Instagram handle. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're uh, not scouts, but that's an eighty grade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my follow up question is: When you are in the majors, what is your players' weekend jersey going to be? It's got to be some version of that, right? I get called Steely and Steely Dan a lot, so I might have to go that way, or I could do the Instagram handle. I got a few options. I'll I'll have to wait. To you'd see. have to shorten it like a like a. Uh, License plate or something like steel, yeah, STL, like put, it all, yo. Put, it, put it like a gamer tag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, throw some emojis in there. Have some fun with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, yeah, gamer tag. I also it should note that it's so if people want to follow, it's Mister Dot Steel, like Justin's name is spelled S T E E L E underscore yo underscore girl G U R L, and that is verified. So I don't know if that means you've been verified as a girl stealer or not. <laughs> He's got the blue check mark uh buy it as well but if y'all want to follow yeah i'll just let people's minds wonder about that part <laughs> not bad <laughs> remain remains to be seen so i know you yeah. said uh, we talked to you for a little bit yesterday you said you're you're hunkered down in uh in mississippi right mm-hmm. yes sir and uh how how has that been going is it i assume, i mean it's home for you so i assume it's fine but it's like obviously yeah, not where you expected to be right now it's, I mean, obviously I'd rather be playing baseball somewhere, but if I'm not going to be playing baseball somewhere, I'd rather be home. Um, it's nice to be home around my family and friends during this time, you know. It's not like I'm by myself in a big city, you know, just locked in an apartment, which I imagine some people are like that. And right. That would just be miserable. But 
Yeah, you're talking to your them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. If I didn't have video games, I don't know what I'd be doing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I'd gone like a year without playing video games. And then I'm, I'm in New York right now. And uh, it's it, I've definitely gone hard back in over the last uh, month or so. And you're, I mean, you're, you're like an active, actual gamer, right? Yeah, so I've actually been to some pro events. I went to MLG Dallas the year I was rehabbing from uh, Tommy John and competed in that, which is it's like a pro event, you know, pro players and whatnot. Um, I've won some handful of tournaments, Call of Duty, Fortnite. So I would say I'm at least an amateur. <laughs> yeah. Are I mean, you more into those games or, or do you like uh, like sports games too? The only sports game I really play is 2K. I'm not really into the show or Madden that much. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine it's just like, you know, you probably get enough baseball in the rest of yeah. your life. I, yeah, yeah, you I, that's 140 games exactly. a year, every year. Yeah, that's like for me, I don't know how Kevin feels, but like there's there's been, because we're both stand-up comedians, and there's sometimes like shows about comedy. It's like, I don't want to watch that. Like that's what I do all the time. Yeah. I feel like if I were a baseball player, the last thing I'd want to do is spend my nights playing baseball video games. So how did that, mm-hmm. that, that tournament in Dallas that you mentioned, like, how, how, what's the setup for a place like that? What's the scene like? Okay, so they have, like, the main stage, which is, like, you know, your big name team. So, like, Optic Gaming, FaZe, um, Splice, like, all the huge names have been in the industry for quite some time. They're, all, mm-hmm. they're playing on the main stage because a lot of people go there just to watch them. And then there's a bunch of booths and tables and stuff where, like, all the other teams play and whatnot, and that's where I was. I forget how many teams it was. I want to say 150 teams in it, and yeah. I forget forget exactly where we placed. I know we won like two or three games, and then we ended up losing, got put out. But it was fun. It was a great experience. I I definitely want to at least go watch one again. Totally, and that's. I mean, this has to be a kind of a thing where if you, I feel like if you asked me when I was 10 what I wanted to do with my life, I probably would have been. <laughs> Like, well, I... I, I think, a fielder for the Cubs or video yeah, game player. I guess I'll play... For, <laughs> yeah, I, was, I would probably would have been like, I'll play for the Bulls and be a professional video gamer, I guess. I'll just... Uh, so yeah, there wouldn't be nothing wrong with that. No, it's not bad. That's a, it's, it's a great projection. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, we, we noticed on your uh, Instagram yesterday that you, uh, you appeared to be, like, working on a, a new pitch. So I'm curious, like, what are you working on down there? Yeah, when I was in uh, Arizona for spring training, they um, introduced me to a slider started throwing it feels real good and I'm really impressed with how fast it's been coming along and I'm really enjoying throwing it so I'm excited to actually throw it against hitters that's great yeah. and where, where were you uh, exactly is there like a facility in town that you're that, that you're working in Mississippi was that like was that uh, Instagram live video you put up from recently? That place is, it's an, yeah, it was uh, three days ago and it was, it's in Mobile, Alabama. It's called Performance Labs. So they have Rap Soto, Hit Tracks, Trackman, like cages, mounds, weight room, anything you can, everything a baseball player needs. So um, me and Ethan Hearn, he's a, also a uh, Cubs prospect. Um, he lives in Mobile and it's like a 30 minute drive for me. So I just drive over there every day, play catch, if I have a bullpen that day, throw a bullpen, and then we just work out and run, go home. Nice. Sounds like a pretty good yeah. setup. We uh, yeah. Can't we talked to we talked a couple of days ago to uh, Alec Mills and and Kevin was actually in spring training watching some of the games. He was asking Alec if he thought the uh, the radar guns were hot. Where were you sitting uh, fastball wise in spring training this year? Did you did you feel like the uh, the guns were hot or, or were people just rare and uh, rare and ready to go? I'm gonna <laughs> say the I'm gonna say the guns aren't hot because I, I like where I was at. <laughs> sure, <laughs> we can we can live with that. Yeah, yeah. I was uh I was like. 2 to 92 95 mostly and i ran up six maybe seven here and there tapping out yeah nice, mm-hmm. nice. yeah so, mills yeah. mills didn't want to take credit for it he's like no no i'm much i throw much slower than that don't worry on <laughs> <laughs> the yeah on the uh on the gun that first game he touched 95 once and he did not want to commit to that uh, <laughs> I actually remember that now. Now that you say that, I remember that. Everybody was like, "Dang, Mills!" Yeah, I was like, "Man, what have you been doing out. this off season?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to save that a little bit. That's a hard. That's yeah. a hard open. Yeah. Uh, we well, and it was cool seeing uh, on your Instagram story the the you know the, all the all the numbers on the little like mm-hmm. iPad like thing. Soda. Yeah, the on the rap soda there. Uh, what is there a particular number out of everything on there that you're focused on most when you're trying to work on a slider? 
it's all the numbers combining. So you're trying to find like the perfect slot, the perfect rotation, the perfect spin rate, you know, the perfect angle and whatnot. And you're just constantly, you know, you throw it, you look at the pitch. And what I do is like, I look at it and I look at the way the ball is spinning, you know, I'll make an adjustment from there if I'm, if I'm needing to make an adjustment. And if I throw a good one, I'll say, okay, I'm going to try and do the exact same thing and just start trying to repeat it at that point. So when you're, when you're filming from, because basically it was that typical view from like behind you on the mound, and I'm sure you've seen those like pitching ninja, like overlays. Do you mm -hmm. try to, when you're working on a new pitch, do you try to record that and then also record your release on like a fastball and curveball and make sure that the yeah. release point is the exact same spot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it, that rap soto tells you all that, like release height, release point, and if you, you just got to make sure all those numbers line up with every single pitch. Nice. That's cool. Now I read, so I know you grew up in Mississippi, but I read that you actually were a Phillies fan and you got to spend like a little bit of time with uh, Cole Hamill. So I was curious about like how much you were able to pick his brain, especially as like another lefty. Yeah. Gr so growing up, my dad was a Braves fan. So when I was real young, I was a Braves fan, but then I went to a Braves game and uh, I was out there for BP and uh, Jimmy Rollins threw me a ball. So I ended up just being a Phillies fan nice. after that. Got, got a Ron Howard jersey. I remember pretty much everybody on that championship team that they had. But, um, yeah, when the Cubs got Cole Hamels and I was going to be in big league spring training, I was pretty fired up because he was one of my favorite pitchers growing up. And Yeah, I got to pick his brain. He was in my work group, I believe, and just started asking about his changeup because his changeup's one of the best in the game and has been for a while. So I just started picking his brain about his changeup, you know, asked different things about the mound and just – you know, the whole nine yards, I was just firing questions off and he was answering them. <laughs> he, was, he was very easy to talk to. That's great. Have you incorporated any of what he uh, told you in terms of stuff? Yeah, my change, change up is I pretty much use the same grip as him and I've just been able to, um, you know, manipulate it how I want and now it's pretty good. That's great. And I, and, uh, I see it's if you go through your, your Instagram feed, as you see, you've, you've worn a lot of different jersey numbers, but it seems like 21 – is your your top choice mm -hmm. go to? Is there yeah. is there a reason why it's twenty one in particular? So th there's a long story, but pretty much my my grandfather played college basketball. He was twenty one. My dad played football at Alabama. He was a wide receiver. He wore twenty one. My brother played junior college baseball. He was twenty one. I we all I wore it growing up. And then um, when I was in first getting into high school, my grandfather never met his real father because he died. Uh, in the war or whatever but he got a box with all his medals and whatnot in the mail and uh, it turns out he played professional baseball over there he was a he was a pitcher and there's a uh, picture of him in his jersey and he was number 21 and, that's oh so God. cool yeah we didn't know anything about him prior to that you've you know, got every just, sport uh, covered pretty much yeah yeah so it, it's there's a lot of meaning behind the number yeah that's I mean that's insane just the mm -hmm. the chances that that would come up randomly again yeah. you gotta I mean you know I know the Cubs usually play a spring training game in Vegas, but if you're at the you know the roulette table, I assume you got to just hit 21 <laughs> over and over. Anytime I'm in the casino and I'm on a roulette table, there's a bet on 21. There you go. You and Sammy Sosa hanging out, just doubling up. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone on the Cubs right now have 21? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think Chatwood had it last. I'm not sure if somebody yeah. has it this year. And I feel like I might have seen Souza with it, uh, but I could I also could be could be wrong on that too. Um, that's great. So, yeah. Now, I know you said you got to uh, talk to Hamels a bit. In terms of other, like, pitchers, did you have you spent any time with Lester or anybody else that you've been able to, like, pick their brain? I've talked a pretty good bit to Kyle Hendricks. He's very knowledgeable, very easy to talk to, very nice guy. Like, he'll go out of his way to talk to you. So, i Talked to him a pretty good bit. Alec Mills, very cool guy. Talked to him a good bit. Um, I mean, all, everybody talks to one another, you know. It's, so there's always knowledge being spread around, especially when you're in uh, the same work groups as those guys. And did you have a sense, obviously spring training was shut down early, but did you have an expectation of where you were going to start out the season or were you not really there yet? Um, I mean, I didn't expect to, you know, break with the big league team right away, but as far as minor league teams, I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you do uh, hopefully break with that that major league team soon, do you have a play up song that you want playing in your mind as you as you take that mound? I'm always curious about getting to pick out the uh, the intro songs. 
Walk up songs is weird, man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's usually just whatever I'm feeling at that time or whatever song I've been listening to a lot at that you know particular time. So it's usually just you know spur of the moment whatever I'm listening to you know that month or whatever I'll make that my walk up song. Do you have uh, any genre in, in particular you're most you're most into musically? Um, I'm interested in pretty much everything, but I listen to a lot of rap, R and B, um, hip hop, country. And then I listen to a ton of podcasts. I love Joe Rogan. I love uh, Theo Vaughn. Let's see. And then part of my take. I love part of my take, too. Nice. Those are great picks. If you, you could be mm. the first first major leaguer ever to come up to a Joe Rogan clip, that would be the, <laughs> <laughs> played off. That would be played hilarious. Off. Oh, man. Just, yeah, there's no rule against it, I guess. Just no, <laughs> no one's We were talking about who's going to be the first person to use a uh, Joe Exotic Tiger King walk-up song. Oh, man. You know no, it's going to happen. Gonna, it's going to happen. If 100%. Baby Shark could happen, I think Joe Exotic can happen. Oh, yeah. For, no doubt um now was it was it 2017 or 2018 that you had the uh tommy john surgery 2017 2017 and uh i mean obviously <laughs> neither kevin nor myself have experienced that how how tough is that both physically and mentally to to have to recover from that um physically it wasn't that hard you just gotta you know do what the trainers say do all your workouts all the rehab you just gotta do it right you know there's no way around it Mentally, you just got to take it a day at a time, you know, wake up each morning, look at what task you have to do for that day and get it done and then, you know, relax for the rest of the day. In my case, I was playing video games. So that kind of, that definitely helped, uh, you know, the time pass. I also had a dog, my dog with me. So I always had somebody there with me. But um, I would say the main thing is just, you know, taking it day by day. Can't just, you know, can't look at the light at the end of the tunnel because it's a pretty long process. So uh, just day by day. Yeah, it's weird. It's a thing that like uh, Tommy John is obviously so many pitchers have had it. I think fans can easily think of him and be like, oh, it's nothing. But it's still surgery. And it's a I mean, mm -hmm. it's about a year of your life coming back. So I feel like it's it's easy to overlook how difficult that actually is now, you know? Yeah, for sure. And every, no doubt, every, like more and more guys are starting to have it. It just seems like the harder you throw, you know, the more likely you are to have it. But on um, the doctors are getting crazy with the success rates on it so I mean it is it isn't a death sentence anymore which is a very good thing but um I kind of kind of forgot where I was going with it well yeah and you're, I mean, well I mean and your stuff it seems like your velocity is back to where oh yeah yeah, not yeah even yeah. above right and that's not from the surgery that's strictly from the rehab all the shoulder work you do you know mm -hmm. you're constantly working out so you're just getting stronger and you're not having to throw so your arm's getting rested so you come back and right you're just firing bullets once you get the arm loose that's great and and you mentioned uh you mentioned your dog what's a what's the dog's name what kind of dog uh, do we have his name is marley and he's an australian shepherd i adopted him while i was rehabbing oh beautiful oh, that's awesome that's perfect great. perfect rehab companion oh yeah for sure now, uh, as far as obviously you didn't know where you're going to start the season, but I'm guessing do you still see yourself ideally more as a as a starter than a reliever if you had if you were able to choose, right? Yeah, I still see myself as a starter, but you know, I, I'm more than willing to come out of the bullpen. I'll do whatever it takes, you know, to help the big league club. Yeah, and in that situation, how would you approach that differently? Is there, you know, obviously if you're coming in a relief, you know, you can maybe air it out a little bit more. Like, how do you uh, adjust how you prepare for that? Um, as far as preparation, you know, I just kind of spread it out a little bit more instead, you know, because I don't have to be ready for the beginning of the game. You know, I'd have to be ready for like the sixth or seventh or, you know, whatever it may be. I would just kind of spread it out a little bit more, maybe take a foam roller out to the bullpen, just stay loose. Um, but as far as like end game, I don't think I would really change that much. Like you said, you could air it out a little bit more because, you know, you're not trying to go five innings. But um I would say I, I would approach it pretty pretty similar as a starter. I'm still trying to get people out. Yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when you got you got named to the to the 40 man roster, what what kind of changes happen when you're named to that 40 man? Is there anything tangibly for you that that changes really, or do you just know, or is the main thing just knowing you're that one step closer? Oh uh, yeah, you're one step closer. You can be called up to the big leagues at any point. Um, your pay increases from uh, what what the minor league pay is. So I mean, that's a good like thing. A, that's <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely nice. And then um, yeah, there's a few there's a few different things, but I mean, as far as like playing in the, I, I went to Tennessee last year, so as far as playing in the minor league, none of that changed really. Right. Yeah, and I mean, you you went uh, straight from high school into the minors, right? 
Yes, sir. Did you, is that something you had always kind of planned on once you got to that level of baseball, or did you consider uh, doing college? Uh, I was signed to Southern Miss. That's where I was planning on going. And as far as going pro out of high school, that really didn't, you know, come to me until probably my junior year. And I just started throwing harder, you know, my body started maturing. So, um, and then I, you know, some pro scouts started hearing about me and started showing up. And at that point, you know, it was kind of when I'm like, okay, so this could actually happen. And it's very exciting, any high school player that's going through that, yeah. which right now, you know, they're not able to play their high school season, which is brutal. Yes, yeah. That's yeah. terrible. That would be, that'd be so tough for seniors. I couldn't imagine not playing my senior year. Yeah, you know, I've thought, I mean, obviously, I was an athlete, but not anywhere near the, the level that you're at. But just thinking about, like, what that would be like as a senior to miss out on that final sports season. Even if you're playing just, you know, as somebody on a JV team in high school, it's still heartbreaking to not be able to have that with the, you know, camaraderie you have with all the guys. Um, was that, just gotta, yeah, yeah. Oh, go, go ahead, Adam. Um, I was just going to say, like, because you chose to – to go, you know, straight to the the pros, essentially. How hard is that as a as a guy that young, 18, 19 years old, to all of a sudden be living in a city that you're not familiar with and, and you know, kind of bouncing around to different teams? There's definitely a, a certain level of maturity you need to have at that age to take on something like that. You know, you're not just going to a college right down the road where your mom and dad's a few hours or a few minutes away. You know, you're across the country. You're by yourself. You know, you're around people you've never met. So, I mean, it's definitely a lot to take in, a lot to adjust. But um, I felt like out of high school, I was ready for it. You know, I knew baseball was something I seriously loved. And I was ready to make it my occupation. So, you know, I took it. Yeah. It's just got to be an insane thing to be, like, going to math class and then seeing scouts <laughs> afterward. It's just like – it's a very, like – I mean, it's a very, like, Disney sh high school show live life mm -hmm. where it's like this kid, it's, it seems surreal, I would imagine, to be living both of those lives at the same time. Yeah, I remember going to high school and stuff, and then I'd have, you know, a game that night, and scouts would, you know, come watch, and then I'd have, like, an in-home visit the next day after school. So, I mean, it was definitely hectic, but definitely a lot of memories in it. Yeah. Now, I assume, like any other baseball player, you didn't uh, exclusively pitch your entire life, so I'm curious – what other positions did you play growing up? And uh, I guess my main question is, can Justin Steele rake? Uh, I like to think I can rake. I actually, <laughs> I hit just about every single day with uh, Ethan Hearn in the cages. And uh, the h hardest I've hit one off the bat this off season was 102. And the furthest I've hit one was 430. Man. Okay, and, and that's all. That's on. That's on hit tracks and track man. So it's legit. And that, and you bat. Uh, you bat lefty or righty? Lefty, strictly nice. pull hitter. <laughs> oh yeah i mean especially if you're coming in as a pitcher I, i've thought about that too where it's like you gotta sell out i mean i'm not oh yeah i'm airing it out i'm gonna yeah. swing hard in case i do hit it <laughs> absolutely you do you're not going up there trying to be tony Gwynn finding the 5.5 hole that's like no, let's let's I'm not find, trying to do that <laughs> no go 430 and pimp it and mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have any that like uh lester <laughs> lester's home runs always seem to go like left center i'm very impressed by the uh he the has like a really he has like a really smooth golf swing like with his batting swing you know yeah. he like just drops the head down i like his swing yeah it, yeah it's just it seems like a very smooth in uh in control powerful swing by a guy who mine's, also mine's a lot more violent than that <laughs> Hey, buggy, buggy whip. <laughs> yeah, it's more like Baez if I had to compare it. Not oh. like Baez, but it's pretty violent. <laughs> sure. Oh, I love Can, that. <laughs> are you are you willing to commit to us right now on this podcast that if you hit a home run in the big leagues, you will pimp it? Oh yeah, no doubt. If I know it's gone, because uh, like if I don't know it's gone, I'm trying to get three. Like I'm going head first in the third. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you hit a, if you hit a four thirty, I think you got to carry your bat yeah. to first like Juan Soto. Yeah. If I if I hit it four thirty, I'm gonna take a good gander at it, and <laughs> it, and I'll get my trot going around the bases. Oh, perfect. That's uh, yeah. God, looking forward to that. That's great. Uh, well, that's great. Well, thanks for I mean, thanks for uh, hanging out with us, Justin. Do you, uh, before before we let you go, uh, I I, I got to ask: Is there any? Do we have any video game wrecks for people who are locked inside right now? Any new game you've gotten into lately you would recommend? Um, Call of Duty Warzone. Anybody that wants to play with me on that, my gamer tag is J S T E E I E. Um, and then my Activision is like it's it's Mr. Steel Kill, not girl, but Mr. Steel Kill. <laughs> sure. You got <laughs> Justin Steel contains multitudes. You got the the Instagram yeah. more romantic side. How much of a how much of a video game uh, shit talker are you? 
Oh, if I'm with my friends, man, we're we're getting we're getting it at each other. <laughs> if one of us has a bad game, you're gonna hear it, no doubt. <laughs> is there any uh, is there anyone else in the Cubs system who's competitive on a video game level with you? Two K, um, Dakota Mekas, me and him used to play a lot in Myrtle Beach. Cabante was really good at Two K. Call of Duty, not. Not up there with me. No um, one can hang. Call, no one yet. Not 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 in Call of Duty. I've been playing Call of Duty since I was like thirteen or fourteen years old. So <laughs> I put in the hours. Sure, you got the stars. You got you got the generals yeah. uh, rank up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five star general. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea that coming out of high school, you were like uh, deciding whether or not to go pro as a gamer or a baseball player. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been something. Yeah, that would have been a tough decision. <laughs> Real uh, look, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Epstein. I really appreciate the offer, but uh, I'm I'm just too good at but, Call of Duty to turn down. Yeah, this Optic Gaming's uh, knocking on the back door. And, you know, they got a nice contract. <laughs> hey, man. When, I mean, once free agency comes up, it's good to have options. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> no it's, doubt, no just doubt. for leverage. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, well, hey, this was this was great, man. Thank you so much for uh, for hopping on with us for a bit. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Anything you want to plug on the way out? Any, uh, I mean, I think we hit your, your socials and ways people can find you, but anything, anything else? Man, I think we got it all covered. I'm good. Cool. Thanks for Great. having me. Thanks for Appreciate having me, Justin. It, Take it easy, guys. Later. Right. See you. Stay safe.